Welcome into the Real Kipper and Born Show on this Monday, February 12th. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, Andrew Adams, and Frank the Tank, Baraska, not from Alaska. Here for the next two hours, wherever you're watching and listening, Sportsnet 590, Sportsnet 360, Sportsnet Plus from 4 to 6, as always. We're glad you are with us. We are. In this Leaf edition of the Real Kipper and Born Show. And whenever you can't catch us live on many of those platforms, please download us wherever you get your pod. And as always, throughout the week, text us at 590-590. We'll get your thoughts, ideas, opinions out. Sammy McKee does a terrific job at doing that. So Super Sunday yesterday. I hope it was a good one for you guys. Yeah, had a blast. Had a blast? Yeah. Patrick Mahomes, you called it on Friday, Sammy. Yeah. I went against you. I thought San Francisco could do it. Yeah. McCaffrey was looking good for me as an MVP I thought you were early. Be so right. I thought you were going to be so looking right. really good. No then, Kittle, no Samuel, no touches no. for those guys. And really. then, you know, your point that this guy's just a winner and winners win, and that's what happened. You know, you just, the exact reason you bet on the Chiefs is for the very moment that you got in overtime where the Niners can't convert the third down. They end up kicking the field goal. And, I mean, at that point, I didn't look at the live line. I wasn't looking at my phone. But I'm sure the Chiefs were favorites, like heavy favorites, because they just know. Yeah. Like, it's like he has the ball in his hand. He's going to probably score a touchdown. He just need. he's going to get as many points as he needs. You know what the moment was for me that was like the Mahomes moment was on the final drive where a turnover just ends the game. Mm. There's one point where he dropped that back shoulder like he was going to go downfield with it. And he was like, yeah. no, no, we're just, you just, you know, you're not going to take that big risk. And he just picked them apart I, on the way down. And I think that's what like true greatness is when you expect it. To, oh, no, yeah, when yeah, you yeah. expect yeah. it. Like everyone watching that game, both of you guys watching the game, you're like, well, He's probably going to do this. It's like, Tiger just, making the putt it. against Rocco Mediate. Yeah. That one in the yeah, yeah. U.S. Open. Yeah, it was. It was like, yeah, of course he made it. Yeah. Rocco said, of course he made it. It just. <sighs> so how many of you had uh, Nick Taylor kind of ruining the start of the Super Bowl for a lot of fans? Because that bled right into the first quarter mm-hmm. where, and I don't know if you saw any of it, but I went to a buddy of mine's house for uh, the Super Bowl Mm-hmm. And but we, he kept flipping back to Nick Taylor uh, going down the stretch here uh, at the waste man- management in F- Arizona, yeah. and it was also must must watch yeah. television. And he, he made he, another bomb, right? Like, well, I mean, not bomb, but twelve, fifteen feet, whatever it was. Birdied what the last three? So he birdied eighteen, 18 to tie three times, and then both times in the in the playoff, including a putt to win where he did the putter flip again. It was like it was getting close to the pregame show, and there was a big group of guys at the, at the party I was yeah. at. And there was like a select few golf guys. Like, let's just leave the golf on until the game starts. Like, okay. They wanted to like get the whole like the pomp and circus. Oh, yeah. They didn't need all that. So we got out the iPad and we watched. We had the iPad going and we were watching both. And I was way more locked into the golf for the first half. I, I was locked into the golf too, but for not sure. like my buddy Steve, yeah. who was like really into it. Yeah. And then I find out a little earlier that on Wednesday he put down two hundred and fifty dollars. On Nick to Taylor win to win the tournament. Oh my that god! That must have paid a ton it was of money. Twenty to one, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was a, like you said, a very good. Yeah, payoff. no wonder it was on. Oh, That's boy. great. Yeah. Congratulations! I, I would have just been like, the Super Bowl is canceled, boys. I'm <laughs> so, watching this. No question, who bought the chicken wings? <laughs> yeah, yesterday. I guess so. That's great. No, wow. it was good, good sports so, Sunday. Plenty to get into, including uh, an in-depth uh, hour of uh, Taylor Swift. So, I mean, mm. uh, let's People just, home just losing let's it just right pass. Now. <laughs> On the Morgan Riley talk here. With, with the golf and the Super Bowl going yesterday, it's almost like old news. Everybody hashed it out yesterday. Game. Just a mid-season. So let's just talk about the St. Louis I, Blues coming in tomorrow night. I thought Taylor Swift looked phenomenal last night. I thought she just looked like she was really happy, like she truly loved Travis, and they got the little storybook ending. I loved it. I, I've been on record from the start. <laughs> love the love. So uh, nothing to do with Morgan Riley. I didn't even really see anything like that. Okay. Uh, let's talk. They, what's they, your favorite Taylor Swift song, boys? They, they, did, they did mention that... <laughs> Her coverage was equivalent to something like three hundred and fifty million dollars worth oh, of uh, at least of, oh, yeah. of value for right. sure to the NFL. But also no the total time she was on camera leading up to the Super Bowl, people talk about all the time. It was like a couple of minutes. You know, yeah, they cut yeah. to her for three seconds here, whatever. It's like, and I would hope they cut to her. She is literally the biggest star on earth. There you go. All right. Mm. 
We're just kidding. We are. On the Morgan Rally as he <laughs> hammered Ridley Gregg. Oh, my God. After he took a slap shot, uh, where, at the, the top of the paint yeah, of the blue crease? Much. Yeah. An in-person hearing will conduct uh, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, like wh- wh- where do you want to start? Because there, it, this the is so layered. First, we're obviously gonna... This is so layered mm-hmm. that you can almost go anywhere with it. So, okay, then we'll start with Sheldon Keefe and his overview of the game. Let's just start Hate there the and let this thing and we'll breathe. Work our way in. There you go. Here we go. We, to, uh, we gave up. We gave up too much in, in transition. You know, it's, it's that's what they do very well, probably better than any team in the NHL. And we uh, fed into that. You know, I thought that we're two minutes away from a pretty clean first period on the road, uh, and just completely egregious play at the end of the first period there to lead to their first goal. Um, and that's our best people. And probably in the last two minutes of the first period, our best people, I thought, I thought let us down there and uh, changes momentum of the game. <clears throat> and ultimately, it ends up being a one goal difference. So, um, you know, I, I'd like that uh, moment back, but there was others inside of it. But at the same time, we missed a ton of chances that we could have probably scored more than we did tonight. And, uh, you know, we didn't. So, you know, we, uh, we lose the game. All right, so I'm going to throw it out to you because there's a number of places we can go. We could start with uh, Ridley Gregg making a, a, a dumb move, not expecting anything uh, off of uh, his slap shot. We can go to Morgan Riley making a dumb yeah. decision on the cross check. We can go to the, the league for boxing themselves in. Where do you want to go, JB? I, I, let's just hear your opinion. I'd like to get your take, what you well, saw, what you thought of it. The thing that, just quickly before that, Maple Leafs fall to 5-6-3 and three versus the NHL's bottom six teams. That's the worst record among teams currently in a playoff spot. Yeah. We're doing it again. Yeah. That is a worthwhile Third straight year where you're doing this again. And, like, clearly the big talking point out of that game is Riley doing what a lot of people loved, what a lot of people hated. But you're wasting points again against bad teams. And, and it's that's, just, what does that come, what is that? Why is that happening? It's almost as if the, the whole situation took the Leafs off the hook. 100%. For, for explaining why you lost again to the Ottawa Senators. Yeah. But that's not what everybody's talking about today. No. I just want to bring that up before we get into it. Yeah. Because it's driving me nuts. So. Let's have it, Kip. What do you think? It's For you to just ask me and throw that yeah. out to me, it's just too general. Too broad. Okay. Too broad. You tell me where you want to start and I'll give you my opinion. All right. So is, Morgan, is, is it a Morgan... So to, to me, I don't even. Yeah. Well, I, I guess we Do might we start look, with Morgan. Let's get no. Let's get the evidence down first. In that, okay. did, what'd you think of the Ridley slap shot? Yeah, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. Yeah. I thought it was uh, it was a a move to show up your hockey club, and showing up a hockey club can come in various forms, yeah. right? And that's where, as players, we decide. What we like, what we don't like. I thought that the reaction for, from Morgan was the right decision to confront him, mm-hmm. but it was poorly executed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that slap shot from Greg is, you know, I've, I've seen people tweeting about like, oh, like hockey's code and like the silliness of the code that like there has to be some retribution because the way the guy shoots it in the net. That's not the code. That's just, do you have any ability to read social cues? That guy said F you to the Toronto Maple Leafs in front of 20,000 people and Hockey Night in Canada directly to them on a big stage. So to me, it's a direct F you, so I don't blame Riley for being upset. He's the first guy on the scene. I'm with you that there's probably other ways to go about it from there. But you got to... I mean, (laughs) you got to put a lick on him. It's of some variety. The only thing I would say is that Imagine where our conversation would go if they did nothing but just if you went over line there. up for a face off to end the game quietly. Sammy, you were at a cottage, <laughs> right? Yes, I was at a cottage. And how was the response to the mo- that moment? It was a charged room at that point. It was a lubricated room, and everyone was pissed off that they were losing to the Sens. And that happens. And one of my good friends, Dave, literally yells out, "Effing kill him." Like, oh. <laughs> and that's before Riley got to him. Before Riley arrived at him, he was like, oh my, like, yeah. And we got our wish. <laughs> he went in there and did it. Yeah. And listen, I 
think this is what kind of makes hockey hockey. And people get pretty bent into shape about the code and all that stuff. But there's not a ton of other sports where you do something that's pretty clearly dumb. Like, that's a dumb thing to do. It really is. Yeah. And that you just immediately have to answer for it. That there is just on ice, in sport, accountability immediately. There's no other sport like that. And I think that's what makes hockey hockey. If you don't like it, I, I don't know what to say. Yeah. That's, I don't know. All right, let's. We're no, gonna, I'm we'll, with you there. We, I got plenty more on this. I trust know, me. I, I know. And we're not going anywhere yeah. for the next hour. So let's go to Sheldon Keefe on the Riley play. What do you think of Morgan Riley's reaction to really Greg's slap shot into the empty net? I thought it was appropriate. You think? Um, are you concerned at all that he might get some supplemental discipline as a result? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll look at it. Yeah. You think maybe the egregious play you were talking about in the first period led to frustrations boiling over for him for the entire night? No, I think he's reacting to a play. And their player has the right to do what he wants in that moment, and our players have the right to react. To, you know, it's the motions of the game, and that's the way it goes. When you say it's appropriate, why do you think that's appropriate? It's pretty apparent. See, this is where kind of Sheldon could get himself into trouble here is that when you throw out it's appropriate, you're 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 blanketing the whole thing, and it, it is not appropriate to go and cross check somebody in the head. No. It's just not. Yeah. No. Um, did but, you think but the reaction? Yeah, having is a reaction is appropriate for sure. Did you think that it was um, like he was trying to cross check him in the head, and that it was with force and direct and? I didn't see it as much force as, say, uh, David Perron I on actually, Zub. I actually thought Riley kind of let go of the stick, kind of yeah. realized, yeah. like, I, it I, made it a one-handed... I, I didn't see it as a very yeah. forceful, and people want to compare that to uh, Perron mm -hmm. or even go back to my day with Dale Hunter and uh, Turgeon. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And it's like, come on, it's not even... I mean, I watched... It's not the, even close. I watched the Turgeon play this morning. Yeah. It's pretty close. Like, it's similar. Oh, that's an insane the, thing the to sta say. The stakes aren't the same. It's not after an over-T win in the playoffs. not looking. He's trying to hurt him like it's a well, full... Oh, what, was, what was Riley trying to do? Well, he's looking directly at a guy who's yeah, coming yeah. at who's anticipating I, I contact. Think yeah. if anyone's this at not... Greg should have got the hands up, probably. Yes. And it's not a playoff game, and he didn't separate his shoulder, and he's yeah. not out the rest of the year. Yeah, right. I mean, those are... Those are huge factors here. Well, the whole thing about it being an in-person hearing, which means, you know, likely a six or more game suspension, you know, to me is insane. Like, I, I just think that's way over the top. I got Morgan Riley, a guy who was a Lady Bing candidate, like he took his first penalty a month ago. You got a player who's not injured. You know, you can make the case that the, you know, the cross-check attempt kind of rides up and he lets go with a hand. Like, it's a bad play. I'm not defending... You know, that exactly. But to me, I see a two, three game suspension. Definitely, you know. But I don't, this seems way over the top to me. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And this is where I think the the league has boxed themselves in a little bit because they now they now look at the, the scenarios. The, the game's essentially been decided. Uh, it's after the whistle. Uh, traveled, uh, distance traveled. Yeah retaliatory, predator-like. So, yeah, it does, in their opinion, check a lot of boxes, but it's still, I think you can't, you can't necessarily go to, to Perron right now and do and think that that situation is apples to apples. It's not. Well, first off, he injured a guy. And also, he hit the wrong guy who was not looking. <laughs> you know, like those, to me, are and, and, clear separators. And and, Alone. and and really, Greg, like you, you've been around the game long enough. Your dad was in the, involved in the game at the pro level. You know yeah. that if you want to go in there and slap a puck and put an exclamation on the fu yeah. to the Toronto Maple Leafs, you don't think anything's coming. Well, that's why the distance travel thing is almost irrelevant to me. It's it's they were you know because it's a breakaway. You have to get to the guy to yeah. confront him. You know that's why there's different distance like, traveled. You're skating back, back checking. If you go back to watch Perron, like Zub was the wrong guy yeah. for Perron. <laughs> He's actually surprised. Yes. Right. I think he had. And Craig's like, oh, what? I, are I think you upset? he had one hand to call for someone to help the injured. To help the yeah. injured. Yeah. And Perron comes in and just drives a stick right at his head. Yeah. Like. 
And I and I personally think six was too much for Perron. Yeah, that even right? that that was high end like, for Perron. That, that to me was a, a three or four. Yeah. But let's act. Let's tack on two more because his agent's Alan Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> now, everyone, you know, of all the things that are out there on social media, one of them is that you know Toronto gets hard done by by Peros, former Montreal Canadian. Uh, that it, you know he suspends the Leafs harder, which he has statistically. There's been more suspensions against the Leafs than any other team since he's been the guy. I yeah. mean, I buy it. Oh, you do? I do. Yeah, but, <laughs> that's fun. No, but okay. because of Toronto, because of it's Toronto. This, this is what, yeah, because it's Toronto. Or, sorry, I mean because of Paris or because it's Toronto. Yeah, it, yeah, because it's Toronto, and Toronto has a a a stage beyond belief. And the moment something happens. It's a it's Saturday night. It's hockey night in Canada. The whole country's watching, and that means the whole league follows along. How many times have we woke up to not really hear about an altercation south of the border, and then it's like two days later we're kind of paying attention, and it's already been decided. Yeah. And then, but now the moment it happens here, and you have millions of people on social media, and it's it. it it, it it heightens mm-hmm. the sensitivity of it. And now the league's kind of caught. It There's no pleasing everybody here. Either they're going to look like they've come down too hard on the Leafs or they cater to the Leafs and they're not tough enough. Yeah. It's going to be one of the two here. Yeah. What's uh, funny is like once you go to an in-person hearing, it's extremely rare that they ever give you less than six. I think it's happened a couple times uh, ever. Well, the, the Leafs just experienced one. Did they not? With, Spezza? Yeah, Spezza. Spezza. got walked back, but he still missed all the games, right? I think, I think he, he may have his... got, he saved one he game. Saved one, yeah. But that was Gary walking it back, guys, right? I think it went from six to four, if I'm not mistaken, Sammy. Yeah. Does that sound familiar? Sounds correct. So, yeah. you know, is this another scenario where Gary could come back in? And, and I'm telling you right now, the Leafs will appeal. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's happening. You think regardless of, yeah. yeah four or five, it's getting appealed. Yeah. Basically, Morgan's history and healthy player and yada yada well i think it's just a um how did you come to this conclusion i we want you you got to come to us with like hard evidence on how you conclude this number Mm -hmm. and that's that's where the 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 the, the leafs will probably hold the league accountable at least to say okay we're going to appeal this but we need we need hard evidence. How do you conclude this? How do you you just pull it out of the sky? Yeah. You know, it's crazy going through all this and hearing the Ottawa Senators talk about it after the game, like the actual players. Well, none just, of them thought it was great. Before we Greg's part. Before we play those clips, like you talk about the Peros aspect of this. Mm-hmm. And in theory, having a guy of his type of player is exactly sort of what you'd want in this situation. Because I would love to know how George Peros, as a player, would have reacted if some guy came down on an empty net and took a slap shot into the empty right, net. Right, but, but it Sammy, doesn't save Sammy. you. Justified all, or not, doesn't all, save all, you. All Morgan had to do was just get the flippers off and jump him. Yes. Yeah. Bear hug him, throw yeah. him to the ice, get the punch him off. in the head, a $5,000 fine and move on. But it just, That's all. He just needed to just smoke him in the head. Oh, well, he did. <laughs> That's he better, did. right? Not with his stick. Yeah. With his hands. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. And just confront him a little bit. Do you want to hear Sheldon talk about the Toronto thing? Sure. Because we have the clip about him because we mentioned it there before. Yeah. Um, which clip is it here? Uh, clip, Keith clip number three, uh, talking about the in-person hearing. Surprise. <clears throat> um, just just given, you know, I've, we spent a lot of time watching pretty much every cross-check that's, that's happened in the last number of years. And... Um, the ones that I thought were similar in nature to, to Morgan were nothing close to requiring that. But at the same time, you know, it's, I think there's a history also of 
events that happen in Toronto and with the Leafs that get more attention and more hype that tend to tend to lead to something uh, something such as this. So um, to that end, not surprised. But you know, we'll uh, it's out of our hands and, and we'll be ready to play tomorrow. There's a long list of things that frustrated me reading social media after this. Mm-hmm. So, by the way, the Sheldon Keith points interesting to hear him directly, feed the beast directly address the thing that people are saying because I guess there's statistical evidence of that, whatever. But you know, um, the Ryan Reeves things is, has become an interesting factor just because he made some comments yeah. on it and people are th- shocked he has the audacity to weigh in. First off, he was asked questions about mm-hmm. it. The other thing that bothers me is people being like, ah, you know, they. It's supposed to be if you have an enforcer that this sort of thing won't happen. It's like, that's not really the case. You know, it's tough to quantify what events haven't happened because Reeves is here. But making this about Ryan Reeves at all is kind of silly to me. Like, he has nothing to do with this. He weighed in like a million other players that were asked. You know, we have Martin Jones, Pinto, Giroux, Norris, Josh yeah. Martin. Like, just everyone was asked about this to get their take. And, you know, Reeves basically said yeah. it was different 15 years uh, ago or whatever. Kind of got a different theory on this kind of Ryan Reeves thing because it, he was supposed to have a bigger effect than he than he's had this year. That's For all. Sure. And, you know, even I, I can tell you right now and Ryan Reeves came on with about seven seconds left. Yeah. I would have told you unequivocally I would have made the decision with seven seconds to go that I'm either going to go through the door with 18 other guys and half of them didn't show up that night or follow Morgan right behind him. Mm -hmm. And I would have picked Morgan. I would have gone with Morgan. Yeah. I wouldn't have gone. I I would have, I would have taken and found the closest Ottawa Senator Mm -hmm. and I would have gone after him and it would have taken all three officials to pull me off. Of well, what, I'm what's going funny. off yeah. with Morgan, and I will go to New York with Morgan. I will sacrifice my money. I'm going out with yeah. Morgan. Yeah, I, you know, it's it's funny, you know, hearing you say that. Just, just, what you know, I was kind of thinking at the time, like, what good is it if he if he does this, if he if he fights Catholic, whatever. But I guess the idea is just that your team told my team, you know, tried to humiliate us. To to me, Morgan's reaction is far deeper than Ridley Gregg shooting a puck in the net. And let's go back to that point because people love this in Leafs Nation. Not one person says, I wish he didn't do it. This is, first of all, it's uncharacteristic of Morgan Riley. Okay. But to me, what Morgan did is probably runs into the same kind of ballpark than we watched a Naz Kadri go after a Boston Bruin in the playoffs. Brusque after he hit Marlowe. Where it's just like, I've had enough of this, mm-hmm. okay? I'm watching. We aren't going anywhere. And I disagree. I think we heard from Sheldon Keefe earlier saying that, you know, this isn't a frustration out of Morgan. This was just an incident. No, no, it's a frustration. Yeah. He's tired. He's the oldest guy that's been around, and he's watching his team spin their wheels, and they are going nowhere. Yeah. And I think factor in that Ridley opened the door for him, and he said, I've had enough. I've had enough. Yes, I am frustrated. I'm watching a team go nowhere. And listen, go play the next few games without me. I'm willing to take that chance. But this team needs something. It needs a shot of something here. Just watching us go off the ice as losers again mm-hmm. without any type of emotional reaction is just not good enough anymore. And if it me- means me to be suspended, so be it. He was actually the perfect guy to be there at that moment because he is not a goon, not a tough guy, not an enforcer. He is a part of the core as much as you can be. He's the one guy out of the five guys we think of as the core who would do this? And he, from the inside of the Toronto Maple Leafs, is basically saying, no, you know, like, we, you know, I'm not okay with this. I don't know how you felt about how the rest of the Leafs handled it. I don't necessarily know what good it would have done for everyone to get in a fight. But Morgan was saying, Listen, we're, not, we're not doing this. Th- first of all, they're not getting in a fight. No, I know. And um, once again, and I would... You know, maybe even last year or earlier this year, I would tell you, and I say, I hated watching 
Austin react to Morgan being on the bottom of a pile after that incident or Nylander or Marner came in really late and I don't know where Marner started but you know that's not a reaction of watching your best defenseman go after somebody and then them piling on them and then you're just you know everybody's just quietly going about their business I hated it mm -hmm. I hated the rest of the team's reaction to Morgan Riley on the ice but I will sit here today and say credit to Domi sorry to interrupt but yeah Domi Max, got in there. yeah Max was the first guy in yeah. correct but outside of that like to, to me all of them should have followed Morgan Riley off the ice all of them but it's not them yeah, it's not them. It's they've 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 made that abundantly clear to every Leaf fan. That's not what I'm paid for. I'm not doing it, mm -hmm. and you gotta accept it. So, who am I to say go in there, Austin, and and help Morgan out or or Mitch? Like you're, that's not who you guys are. Is that's it? That's just the way they are, and you have to accept that they want to go and outscore you. Yeah. That's why they're getting paid ten and a half million. Yeah. They are not running over you. They're not going through you. They have no fu to you in a scrum or uh, play the part of you know you you can't do that to my team. That's not what they're about. Yeah, I spend a lot of time defending thirty four on this show because I do believe he's a special player. But he is the number one deal cutter in the NHL during scrum. He is he's chit chatting with someone every time. Like, oh yeah, yeah. And everyone's mad, but we're buds. It's I, I, not, I it's I'm not different than you. Him. I, but listen, okay. it's not him. And not so him. that for that matter, I don't want to see him. I don't want to see that become a five on five brawl. It doesn't make sense to me. Greg getting greased makes sense to me. You know, you can ask his teammates who are kind of like, eh, well, you know, <laughs> you, you, you do want to see it. Well, but sure. you're just not going to see it from them. Yeah. And I'm I've come to grips with, with the way they're going to go about this, I guess. Right. But. You know, it's a, it's an interesting moment, and I think Leafs Nation, and that's what the point I wanted to get back to. If you look online, a lot of people say he shouldn't have cross-checked him, he shouldn't have done it quite like that, whatever. But to a man, everyone had the thought when Greg did that, which was your Kill buddy's him. reaction. Kill him. Yeah, you can't. You, know, you can't go in and just there, there's no, deliver that clear. There's no level of hockey. Like, you can talk about the code or whatever you want. There's it, no level of hockey where that's acceptable. Well, the, and the code is not relevant here no. is my argument but, at all no, this. It's just a social cue. This guy said F you to you, obviously. Nobody's really selling that it's acceptable. Uh, no. no one's selling it. No. We're just telling you that this is this is the way it is. And, you know, I, I, I get people like us. We're talk radio. We're going to talk. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got social media. Everybody... But, Here's the bottom line is that no, nobody cares what I think. Nobody cares what anybody thinks. The, the, all that matters is the players on the ice get to decide yeah. what this code is or isn't. Not you, not me, not anybody. Mm -hmm. If Morgan says that that was unacceptable, then for him it's unacceptable and that makes it acceptable or, or, or at least it has the ability to, to happen like oh that can't happen there's in not our game. one of his teammates it's who like, looked at that and went morgan what are you doing yeah. no that did oh, not happen we can't let that happen in the game and it's like what from your couch <laughs> right it can't happen you're telling me from your couch ask the guy on the ice who who can decide whether it's acceptable yeah. or not because all that's the only opinion that matters yeah not yours Saturday night. I got to tell you, there'd your be a bag of chips. It would hurt being a Leafs fan if Greg had done that and then Riley said, hey, don't do that again, as he skated by on his way no. to giving knuckles down the bench. You know, like I, this is how Leafs fans wanted that to go. Um, you know, now knowing that the player is fine, you know, it's. Yeah, he's at practice today. Like, yeah. Six games is when it happens, which seems like it's going to happen. It's going to send Leafs Nation into a tailspin of anger. And yeah. they're gonna, people are going to be frothing at the mouth, boys, when this happens. If it actually is six games. Well, and what's terrifying here, Sammy, is, you know, they have three pretty winnable games. They have a homestand coming up, which is like St. Louis. Philly. Philly. Ducks. Ducks. You know, if you lose a couple of those games by a goal because you don't have a guy to put on the ice because Lilligren's playing your top pair, this could be a real yeah. flashpoint issue for this league. I think there has – I think – there, there's a good chance it could come under five games still. I do too. Oh, well, I don't know about under five, but I think... Yeah. No, I think, I think there's a chance that they can, they, can go, they can go three or four still. Do you? Really? Yeah. yeah. I do. Huh. 
They should. Uh, they should. That's the I don't know if it'll happen. Way to go. That's based on nothing but my opinion that I think there there might be a bit of a you know, a meeting of the minds that even though it it looks the same, it's not. It's Morgan Riley, never been suspended before. Even Perron had a retaliatory suspension, I think, in yeah. the past or a stick infraction or something. He didn't hang on to the right? stick. It, I don't side. think Forced they're, they're comparable, yeah. you know, incidents. So if it's five games that Morgan Riley's gets suspended for, it'll be Blues, Flyers, Ducks, Blues, Coyotes. So, yeah, so like it's games that the Leafs have a run here. You're supposed to win some games over the next five. And then after but that. It's, it's bad on the back end. It goes it goes uh, in Vegas, in Colorado, home for Vegas, home Coyotes, Rangers, Bruins, Sabres, Bruins. So yeah. you need them back for those ones. So you do. With five. So they're looking at right now Brody Lilligren, Benoit McCabe, Jordano Legison. Mm-hmm. Like that. Guys, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> It's bad. <laughs> All right, we'll we'll take a quick break sure. and we'll, we'll get into what this defense core can look like okay. without Morgan Riley. A Joseph Wall update. Uh, still plenty more to go on this Leaf edition of the Real Kipper and Born Show. So do not go away. Welcome back into the Real Kipper and Born Show Leaf edition. Top of the hour, we're going to welcome in Ian Mendez, senior writer for The Athletic, based in Ottawa, who's got an article, is there a right way to score an empty net goal? Ian's wondering. We did say, do you want to say what you said off the air? Well, we're just uh, two sides to every story, right? Yeah. So, and we're coming at it uh, predominantly from, from the Leaf side, but if, you know, an Ottawa fan is out there and it's been a very long season already Mm -hmm. and it's been a very long time since you've made the playoffs it's got to be a part of you that kind of likes sticking it to the leaf great moment right right you know people were you know i mean he didn't punch he didn't he didn't didn't stick anybody he didn't spear anybody like you said that that. (sighs) okay no it's 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 disrespectful it's showing up your team but it's not like it's a suspense like we're debating right. a suspension yeah, yeah. here, right? It was yeah. just a guy that just give just stuck it to the Leafs. Yeah. Right. And out of the games that we've seen over the years between this battle of Ontario, where they've all gone quietly into the sunset, mm-hmm. it's not horrible to sit there and go, Oh, when do they play again next? Well, they don't. I know. Yeah. yeah. Right. But that's the first thing I did mm-hmm. was look for when that next game is. And at the end of the day, we've seen guys in the past, some of them, like even our, our good friend uh, Rob Brown for the uh, covers the Edmonton Oilers, right, uh, with the, the pumper nickel down yeah. the bench, right, beside the bench. Like there's stuff that really can piss off a team. Yeah. But, okay, so throw it out there. Mm-hmm. Like what are you going to do about it? Well, and that's kind that, of what, what happened. At least it made the game somewhat interesting you know, everyone hearing that has seen the f around and find out chart all right i f around <laughs> and yeah that adds up you know like that's kind of what right? happens at it's, the end of the day you have the right to piss off another team and then look them in the eye and i'm not saying ridley did this mm-hmm. but that's the way it should work yeah I, I took a slap shot two feet from your net yeah. what are you gonna do about it like that it's not a bad way to watch a hockey game. Well, it's either. amazing that he wasn't more prepared. My junior coach, and this is, sounds terrible, but he used to have us say, you know, if you're going to, like, can't score, we're going to run the goalie. We're going to send someone into the crease. So, you know, I want someone to go in there and do it. Throw your gloves up and turn around and take the first comer. Like, just do the first person show, who shows up. Like, you're, and that to me should have been Greg. Like, once you slap that puck in the net, you might as well throw your gloves in right after it and, like, here we go. You know, uh, but yeah, I don't think it's the end of the world either. I'm not like personally aggrieved by it. It's just oh, I am <laughs> right. And oh, yeah. People yeah, actually got texts that said, "I hope Sammy's mad about this on difference. Monday." No, I'm I'm livid. Yeah, I know you are. Uh, but the reason he did also, it, it's Pippi, I got mad texts right? from Lee sense. Like he he's mad. Like I know. He's Rizzi, playing the Greg because shouldn't they're play. like Sammy. Is their coach should scratch him? They're all like Sammy. He's jaded. No, I'm not. He's the playing the worst team in the league. It's he. They. It's like their Stanley Cup final. That's why he did. He's like, oh, it's their biggest game all year. They play the Leafs. They're like, oh, we beat the Leafs. That's all they get every year, and they're just pissed off. He just, it was Bush League Kipper. It was. He got what he it, deserved. So 100%. What, so what? 
like, yeah, it was Bush League, but it's not the end of the world, Sammy. Well, like, obviously, not the end of the world. You're, you're, I mean, we're talking about sports you're, here, you're, but... You're putting way too much no. thought and effort to it. No, no Because no really, it, at the end of the day, it's kind of a meaningless thing. You said it off the top. Mm. It masked. Oh, the, well. the big issues we yeah, have the, not even touched. The Leafs might suck. Right? They yeah, might be the biggest issue. Right? Yeah. Leafs. So that's, that, that's, that's really the most important thing out of Saturday night. But one not, thing, not, Kim. Not, not a, a, an empty net slap shot. But one thing on that. Let's play Claude Giroux and his take on, you know, what he thought of the, the yes. slap shot, whatever. Just to get a sense. Cause, sure. You know, I'm sure in the room. Anyway, give, give me Claude Giroux's thoughts on the play. Oh, I think uh, sometimes the emotions get the best of you, and uh, you know, for people I know, Ridley is uh, uh, he's a great kid, and uh, you know sometimes uh, the emotions get the best of you, and the crowd was kind of in the game too, and um, you know, I know you don't like to see him going down like that, but uh, you know, I was, I don't know, um, no comment. <laughs> yeah, I love the long comment and the no that, comment. That clip sounds like Ridley was the one who cross-checked him. That sounds like he's that. Like for he second, sounds more pissed off. For a second, he could be talking about Morgan, and then he's not. He's talking about yeah. Ridley. Well, he, he's trying not to say like you don't do that. You let's, know, like he's like, he's like he's a good kid. I swear he's not usually like this. Like me defending my seven. Can we year listen old. to Norris too? Can we listen to the Josh Norris sure. clip there, Andrew? <laughs> yeah, I mean, never really know what Gregor's gonna do. Um, I mean, I loved it, but um, I'm sure obviously if. We were on the other other side of that. I don't know if we would have liked to either. So, um, but I mean, I didn't really like the retaliation. But um, I, I understand their frustration. But um, yeah, it's over with, and uh, um, I guess it was entertaining. So for hockey context, he said it fast. It was entertaining. He did, but for hockey context, yeah, he's the one trying to say this is over. It's over with now. Like he he almost feels like Ottawa is still owed more retribution than the other way around. He's like. You know, I, I can see why they're pissed. Yeah. Uh, this is over with. Like, we're, we're even, you, you know, when really, their guy just took one in the chops, and they should be more mad. He's like, everyone knows. That Every, everybody guy, knows. The that kid, guy the dives kid. around and runs the goalie and acts like an idiot every game he plays in. <laughs> and he's get, he, All right. he's, It's true. He's one of the most hated hey. guys in the league. He is. <laughs> Every game I watch, he's doing something dumb. And he did something you dumb. Love him as and hey, he, he all got all a, I know he, is he's, he's gotten to you. Oh, big time. He's living in my kitchen, but he's slamming my cupboards. I can't stand him. I can't right? stand that Stutzel and either is, diving all over the what, ice. What is he, 20, 21? 21, I think, yeah. Okay. Just a young kid who just kind yeah, of got up. That's why his and, captain and, and, is and like, all right, well. Drew nailed it. Uh, he just got caught up a little bit. Yeah. But big picture, th- big picture here, like, yeah, the Leafs are, there's yeah, some serious look, concerns let's not here. let that go and, away. And none of them have to do with an empty net goal. No. Although, by the way, I want Nylander's shot from the point when you're the last guy back Ugh. to beat the first screener. Like, just get it by the first guy for me on that play. Anyway, Ugh. totally separate small piece no, there. Was, hated that. Hated that, too. Yeah. Hated that. I'm trying to shoot it by the first. Well, and it's I, not, sorry, I'm just pissed off. I, I'm, I'm, worried well, about, you, I'm worried about the state of the Leafs. I really am. I'm watching them play the crappy Sens. Is it because Detroit's 10-2-2 never... in their it, last game? And it's mostly Ottawa. 8-2 like, Tampa. This is really good, and for your entertainment pers- purposes, it's really good that the Battle of Ontario is back because I really had this, like, few moments where I felt sorry for Ottawa because they just sucked so bad for so long. I was like, oh, they don't really, they're not really a threat. They beat the Leafs. They had their little fun. And then they, this guy goes out there and does that, and I'm all the way back. Stutzla diving all over the ice, worst diver in the league. It's like, I'm back. I am I'm back, back baby. baby. I can't stand that Since team. Since 7-2-2 two and two in their last 11, I think that's the math on that. Yeah, 11. Yeah, it always happens. Every you team gets. Late every, season, every, oh, no, this, every, this is the, this is always happens. This no is the pressure. Super Bowl. Right around, like, right around the actual Super Bowl, they're like, hey, let's start every. winning some meaningless ones that everyone thinks let's we're good again. Pick here. And then everyone's like, hey, we're going to make the playoffs next year. And let's make sure they get 80 points first. <laughs> that was actually a preseason combat yes. years, if I recall. Anyways. Yeah. Want to talk about the actual lease? We, we, know, <laughs> we, we know Morgan's good, getting we suspended. That. What we don't know is uh, the number of games, uh, but we do know what potentially this blue line could look like tomorrow night against St. Louis. And I don't know, guys. No Morgan. And I don't know. Can Q, we Q Brad can, May? Can, well, it's not good. Can can Leaf fans just hope and pray that uh it'll look like the last time he was out for an extended period of time when they went on a, a very 
good run without Morgan yeah, they were really a year good. and a half ago. Yeah, they could use Justin Hall and yeah. know, do they have anyone else Well, there? I remember Mac Hollowell was playing in games. Like yeah. it wasn't it was really thin. it wasn't pretty then either. I don't know. Can can is there a chance that they could just tighten up here and and just play the percentages and not throw like pizzas? I up mean the ice? it was an absolute pizzeria, was it not? Like yeah. the Benoit play <clears throat> Total pizza, Morgan to Mitch there, bit of a pizza. Like yeah. it, it On a was... controlled breakout, which kind of derailed everything. How, how come one mistake turns into six for yeah. them? Oh, God, they were actually so in decent shape. Yep. Yep. They were a whisker, which we thought would be potentially a good goal on a debatable kick in, turn into an offside. Yeah. That's two nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, I mean, certainly it's, as Keith said, winnable game. You know, I get my fancy stats from Sport Logic every night. You know, they had the expected goals edge and, you know, high danger scoring chance edge and, and all that stuff. But you you don't have a goalie who is being great. Like Sammy, you, you didn't like his game or whatever, or Martin Jones I mean, game. You didn't think he was bad? I think he was bad. But I think the point we agreed on is just, but he wasn't good. Yeah. You know, like he wasn't bad, but he wasn't good. And at some point he like a little bit of extra I help here. thought Corpus Allo was pretty good. US. Okay, let's just stay on uh, the D for a minute, and we listen to Sheldon Keefe with Life Without Morgan. Number five. Well, I, I, I mean, I think it goes without saying. Yeah, I just got to go through and look at uh, look at different options. Uh, you know, uh, it's a chance for us to get Brody playing on his left side. Um, you know, so I, I suspect you know, when you lose a player with Morgan and his and his minutes and the role that he plays, yeah, everybody's gonna have to move around and play in different spots and play with different people depending on the situation and to manage the minutes and such. But you know, like, yeah, like anytime you have somebody out with an injury or whatever the case may be, uh, you're just you know you expect your team game to tighten up that much more and the individuals to to step up and and take advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, I mean, Lilligren has no points in his last 10 games and isn't playing a ton of minutes, and he's going to have to be, this is his chance to find it. You know, mm. go ahead and play some more minutes and probably play with Brody, who'll be on his yeah. left side. Yeah. I don't love that pairing. Well, I'm going to come out, gonna come out and say that. Ben Wah McCabe, I guess. I mean, this is a team just was bad last night. screaming for some help. Do you think I got to make a trade? Yeah. I do too. Yeah, and um, I, I, I'd, I'd be on it. I, I don't know if I'd want to go much further than Wednesday without doing something, even if you add a fifth or sixth defenseman, uh, you, you need to shore this thing up. I think the management needs to show that it's in it with the team here. Like they have their pulse finger on the pulse that this, they're going to be without a guy who's playing 25 minutes a night. Look at the play Riley makes on the Domi goal last night. You know, comes down the wall, makes a slick pass into Robertson, gets the rebound, makes another yeah. slick, you know, like, they don't have anyone who's going to help create like that from the back end. No, it's no one. But. So, you know, you're in a dogfight with the Red Wings. So they're in the first wild card spot with the Red Wings in the second one. Behind them is the Islanders, the Devils, and the Penguins, all of whom are very capable of going on runs. Yes, they're just as close to going on a run the other way, but, you know, it's it's tight. Here, I got the standings up on the screen here. It's, it's tight. They got games in hand on Tampa, so by points percentage, they're ahead of them, but... The point is you can't afford to just go, ah, if we go one and four with Morgan out, we're okay. You're not. I remember at the start of the year where we had the conversations like, we sure this is a playoff lock? Mm-hmm. And we kind of got out of that for a while. Kind of back. Like, I, I think those teams that are behind them, when you look at those standings that were just up there, you know, I don't think the Islanders are very good. They just got starched by someone there the other, the other day. But, I mean, they're capable of putting – got a new coach. They're capable of putting together a little run here where they get back into the conversation. Right. Devils may trade for a goalie. Pittsburgh's not awful. So are the Leafs, right? Yeah. They're, so you're, I, not, you're not concerned at all? I'm not. Okay. I'm not concerned. Like, right. Makes me happy they, to hear you they, say they that, they but really I, I do have a bit of They really got to stink. I don't see a huge push of from, from the Islanders. And then I'm watching Washington, and I get that Ovi's – has scored some goals in the last week. But, like, even the fact that we're talking about Washington potentially in the playoffs tells me that, yeah, half this league stinks. Buddy, Washington's a minus 34 goal difference. And they're still they're still <laughs> sniffing. I know. Let's add two more teams. And um, right? Yeah, so I, I don't know who's going to push. 
Well, the Devils are the goalie push, I think. The Islanders have been without Pelic, Pollock, and um, you know they've had just been had hurt D, so they could be all right. But yeah, anyway, Philly's going to drop so, out. So you got to go, you got to you got to lose like five, six in a row to really start. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> can we get excited that Joseph Wall is is practicing again with the big boys? Yeah. yeah. First yeah. time since sure. December seventh. Can, can I ask you something more important than that? Of course. Before we go to break here. Yeah. Where are we at on on Keith Watch? I I just uh, I I can't see. It's too I, late. Mid Feb. Listen, I, I don't believe I don't believe for one second it's ever too late. Mm-hmm. So, but I, if you read the tea leaves, there's, there's just nothing that uh, suggests that they're, they, they're considering this as an option, at least from my end, yeah. from, from the vibe that I get. Yeah, same here. I haven't heard anything. And, and to me, it's, to me, it's personnel right now. This d is not good. They, I mean, maybe Wool comes back and gives them above average goaltending. That would be helpful. Like, would you ever consider going to get Craig Berube right now? For Sheldon, yes, I would consider that, but I'm not in charge. But like, there's a lot of nights where I look at this team and I'm like, some big mistakes happening every single night. And I know it's personnel, and I know, but it's just it's just big decision that would come with a fairly big price. And I'm not suggesting that money's a factor here. If they really believed it and uh, felt like he'd be worthy of a probably four or five million dollar a year contract i mean he's stanley cup winner yeah absolutely um that but where is the organization as a whole here moving forward right i I don't know there's still there's the keith pelly element guys there's a new ceo coming in mm -hmm. so you know do we assume that everybody's got the green light to do what they want to do do they want keith involved in this already he doesn't officially start till i think april right but is he now to the point where, from the outside, that he's starting to weigh in on decisions? Well, I think, Kip, let's just say that, you know, they do want to make some sort of changes or whatever. If they go hire Baruby now and then they lose in the first round mm. and then they want to, you know, make changes above that, may, you know, whether it be Brandon or Brad or whatever it may be. Mm. Then you bring in new people and you've just hired a new coach and it wasn't the guy the new people I, wanted. I get it. That's you cool. know? I mean, that's a good point. I get it. Point. No, that's, yeah. it's that's, almost like, that's the point. Let's see if these people right? can do it. And then and if, if they not, can't, we'll figure it there's out there's a chance, you know, there's a chance that they may go bigger, you know? And yeah. I don't know where Keith Pelly is after all of this with Brendan Shanahan. Have, have they had conversations already? You're, you're my guy. I believe in you. You're not going anywhere. Make a trade, hire a coach, do whatever you need to do to get this team on the right track. Like, is that going on behind the scenes? I don't know. Yeah, but that is so. Yeah, I don't think that's. Mm, I don't think that's imminent by any means. But it is this to me in terms of coaching is a fascinating window to see if you can get some more out of you, these guys. Can Lilligren give you more? Can you spread the top three guys out on three lines? Can we just be, take a look at something different? That would be nice. Can we get Domi? Domi had his, what, his best game as a Leaf or one of his better games the other night. Listen, uh, can we get him more opportunity. D- Domi's played more in the last two games than he's played like, yeah. in, in a long, long time. And he, Domi looked good Saturday so night. So we're finding him a little bit, a little more opportunity. He's finding it. You know, Can you give a little bit more to Tyler Bertuzzi? Morgan Riley's not there to run power play one. Why don't we have Willie or Mitch on the point and have Bertuzzi somewhere in the mix here on the first power play unit? Give him some more or if you want it to be Connor Timmons on the point, fine. I still think Bertuzzi should get some run. Mm. This is the opportunity now to see if you have more than you thought you did. Uh, last thing before we go. Leafs lead the league in suspension since 2017-2018. Yeah. For a team and that everybody like, says is the softest team in the league. Bottom pins. And, that's uh, who's behind them? Boston? Yeah. Yep. Which is really strange. So there you go. Well, the, the joke with the Paris thing is that uh, Anaheim, I think, is third, and Paris played for San Jose, right? No, no the opposite. Played, San Jose yeah, is yeah, third, and yeah. he played for Anaheim. So everyone's like, all his rival teams. Are, Hold the grudge. I'm not a uh, tin tinfoil hat guy, but uh, there are those that are. Fast hour, guys. Oh, my God. That and we done? didn't even get into Taylor Swift. Ah. Maybe the next hour, as we welcome in Ian Mendez, senior writer for The Athletic, based in Ottawa. I'm sure he's got... Oh, I ran out of time. <laughs> it's the national edition of the Real Kipper and Born Show. We are live on Sportsnet.
Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver and Sportsnet 960 in Calgary. This hour of Real Kipper and Bourne brought to you by Bet365. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee. All right, so where did you have, like, on your Super Sunday that the Oilers would be losers of two of the last three games on your bingo card? No, I can't say I thought uh, about the Oilers. Microphone? I can't say, can't say I thought about the Oilers yesterday. I was watching Nick Taylor and yeah, Taylor Swift. and Yeah, a lot of Taylors involved. Yes, heavy Taylor day. I, I, yeah, I really loved that Super Bowl last night. A great game. Yeah. I mean, slow for a while. Yeah. but I mean, that's football. Yeah. And sometimes it's not great for the whole thing, but it really, how much better could you ask for? You get the one of the best of all time driving for a win in the overtime, only the second time in history that a game's gone to overtime. I I don't know what the record is in the U.S. for watching a Super Bowl, but I I, I believe it's roughly around 120 million, 130 mm. million, mm. like population I, I, of this 360 million. The, uh, the number is going to be huge. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like half the country, you, basically. Half the country <laughs> will have watched. And I will never understand how, and I said it on the couch at the time, how Kyle Shanahan took the ball first when both teams get a chance in overtime. Yeah. It is a mind-numbing decision. Yeah. Because you always get to react. Well, and, and so even worse that you heard players on San Fran saying they didn't know the overtime rules or hadn't discussed it. Guys, the Chiefs are like, we talked about it like all the time. Yeah, that's the difference, right? That's yeah. the kind of stuff that Belichick would do that you always remember the little details and that comes down to that. Do you want to hear, hear a crazy quick football stat? That Kyle, In Kyle Shanahan's three Super Bowls as an offensive coordinator or head coach, his teams have been outscored 68-12 to 12 in the fourth quarter in overtime. Does that mean he gets lots of leads? 68 to 12? <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways. All right, have we got Ian Mendez? I think we do. All right, senior writer for The Athletic based in Ottawa. His article, is there a right way to score an empty net goal? Question mark. Yes! But I do believe that he tells us there's a right way oh. to score an empty net goal in his article. Is that true, Ian? <laughs> the, the question mark was for editorial purposes only. <laughs> but really, you're telling everybody... I know how to score an empty net goal, and that was totally acceptable by Ridley Gregg. I, you know what? I should have entitled it, Is There a Wrong Way to Score an Empty Net Goal? <laughs> right? Because I think that's what we found right. out uh, on the way. What what, you know what's funny is that halfway through the game, neither team had been penalized. And I actually looked up online to see what's the least penalized game in the history of the Battle of Ontario. And it turned out it was six minutes. Uh, total uh, of, of PIMS. And I thought, wow, we're he uh, headed towards the least, uh, you know, uh, toxic Battle of Ontario, <laughs> least abrasive. And then with five seconds left, all hell breaks loose. They, they, honestly, I, I couldn't believe, like, what a what an explosion of opinion mm -hmm. in the last 36 hours. This has been really, really fascinating. So if if we look down the, the roster, uh, and, and we were going to pick a guy to piss off the Leafs at the end of the game. Would would Ridley Gregg be at the top of your list? Because our, our boy Sammy here says he despises him now as a, <laughs> as a Leaf fan. I'll tell you, he is, you know, when Ottawa drafted him back in 2020, he was a late first round pick. The comparables by a lot of people, kind of a Brad Marchand type, uh, you know, for, for a bit of an older fan, Mike Pekka was a name that was brought up with Ridley Gregg. And, you know, and Ridley's got like a slight frame, right? He's not a huge guy. He's a small guy. So the Mike Pekka comparable, I think, was apt for a lot of people. And if you remember the way Mike Pekka played the game, he was a pretty tenacious guy uh, that, that sometimes created havoc around the ice. Brad Marchand does the same thing. And I think you're starting to see a little bit of a window in the Ridley Gregg. So, yeah, if you're asking me, you could pick one guy that was the disturber I mean, Brady Kachuk would be on the list of, you know, potential agitators. But knowing everything I know about Ridley Gregg, I think he really enjoys being in the middle of everything. So why don't you frame the article for us? I know you used uh, the Patrick Stefan miss <laughs> as sort of yeah. the uh, the jumping off point. Just give us a quick synopsis of your thoughts on, on what went down. Yeah, and look, and, and the reason why I bring up Patrick Stefan, and that, that was 17 years ago, which is crazy because it kind of feels like that was yesterday. But, you know, for people that don't remember, Patrick Stefan of the Dallas Stars had a wide-open, empty net, not unlike Ridley Gregg, 10 seconds left in the game against Edmonton. And he just was kind of soft, cavalier on it. Puck skips over his uh, stick. Oilers come back and score. 
And what we had heard in the last, you know, 15, 16 years, whatever is, you know, you better finish hard. Don't, don't just take for granted when you have an empty net, finish hard. You know, Ridley Gregg obviously went to the opposite extreme. And so people were looking at that. They're like, you know, that's not what we meant. Don't finish like that. You, you know, there's a happy medium. And I think this is what's interesting, guys. Um, I think for the critics of Ridley Gregg, your feeling is, you know, he should have shown some restraint. He should have let his emotions be kept in a little bit. And he didn't have to go full Patrick Steffen and he didn't have to go full Ridley Gregg. There was a happy medium in between. He could have calmly and confidently put the puck in the net. We're not having this discussion. That's what he should have done. That's the critics of Ridley Gregg. But I think that there's also the critics of Morgan Riley who are saying, you know, you didn't have to do, you you only didn't have two options either. This was sort of the crux of my article. You know, I think a lot of people th thought, you know, Morgan Riley, all, all he had two ch choices to make. One was to do nothing or one was to cross-check Ridley in the head. And I think there was a middle ground for Morgan Riley too. So if you didn't like what Ridley Gregg did, I, I think Morgan Riley could have grabbed him. He could have, he, you know, theoretically, could have dropped the gloves. There's a lot of things he could have done that probably wouldn't have warranted a call from the Department of Player Safety. So I guess I was trying to see, is there a middle ground here for both players? But as you know, with this discourse, there's never a middle ground. So what you're saying is that it warranted a reaction, just not the one that included a cross-check to the head. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying, Kipper, is I understand it. Like, So I, I talked to some Ottawa guys. You know, I think Josh Norris had the best quote of anybody on Saturday night. Josh Norris said, I loved it. Like, you're talking about Ridley Gregg. I loved it. I love what Ridley did. However, if that happened to us, I'm not going to lie to you. We'd probably be pretty upset. We just thought the retaliation went a, a little bit too far. And I think if you ask most players, that's probably what they would say. They would say, nah, you know what? I didn't like that. Somebody should have said something to him. But it shouldn't have risen to the level of, uh, you know, getting the attention of the Department of Player Safety. But um, I, I, I understand. I guess I'm saying I don't, I don't have to agree with it. But I understand it. I understand why the Leafs are upset. Morgan Riley is upset. I understand it. But I also understand why Ottawa fans are are not upset because they're like, all he did was shoot a puck into an empty net. Like, like uh, it, it's one of the wildest <laughs> controversies that I've seen in a long time. So, Ian, um, Norris says, I loved it. My reaction, if I was in the room, would have said, well, what did you love about it exactly? And I don't know where his follow-up was or if there was a follow-up, but in your opinion, what did he love about it? Uh, you know what I think? And I think if you pulled the Ottawa guys aside and you asked them about Saturday night, uh, guys, I think there was a real, there's a real anger from Ottawa players that when, when Toronto comes to town in particular, their own building gets taken over. And it's... I'm going to put the number at 70%. I'm going to say that that building was 70% Toronto fans. So I think Ridley Gregg, if that game, let me put it this way. If that game's in Toronto, I don't know that he does that. But I think in Ottawa, I think the feeling from the players is, this is really, really frustrating for us as players that our arena gets taken over. And hey, listen, full credit to Toronto fans. You come in, you buy up the tickets, you do... I'm not criticizing Toronto fans here, but, but I, I think... Ottawa players get really frustrated when their own barn gets taken over. And I think in some ways, and by the way, we tried to speak to Ridley today. He declined to speak until after the Department of Player Safety hands out uh, their, their ruling on, on Riley. But I think if you pulled him aside and asked him, why'd you do that? Or even asked Norris and got, why, why'd you like it? I think they get really frustrated when their own building gets taken over. And that was a little bit of a subtle, not so subtle shot at those Toronto fans in the building. Ian, what do you think of the idea that Riley will see uh, or get an in-person hearing, potentially six-plus game suspension for that play? You know, I, and this is where I'm going to understand where Toronto fans come from. And I, I, like, this thing is a wheel of justice, right? Like, they spin that thing, and the two of you who have been around this game a long time have no idea where that's going to land. I don't know where it's going to land. And... I think that's the frustrating thing is that you see other things that have happened and yeah, it does at times, and I can't believe this is going to come out of my mouth, but at times there does seem to be disproportionate uh, discipline handed out to some Toronto guys 
I, I do see it. I've seen the numbers. I'm not, this isn't an opinion. This is actually looking at the data. Like, wow, Jason Spezza got that. And, you know, Austin, you know whatever, go down the list. There, there, there appears to be some disproportionate responses sometimes from the Department of Player Safety. So when it happened, I thought, you know, that, that should rise to the level of supplemental discipline. You could talk me into three games or four games, whatever it is. I mean, I see some people saying that this is Dale... Hunter, Pierre Turgeon, I think that's a bit much. That, my opinion. Uh, but the fact that there's an in-person meeting and that they're going to New York means to me that Toronto's really going to fight this. And I, I think this is going to be really interesting. I, I I wonder if it comes down to where David Perron was, which was six games. And I even think Toronto will be really upset if it gets up to that, that six-game mark. Hey, Ian, did, did really Greg start something for the Ottawa Senators in terms of just now presenting as a team that, you know, can on occasion stick it to teams like the Leafs or other ones. I mean, there's some toughness there with, with Brady Kachuk. Um, kind of surprised that the, the last seven seconds went as quietly, to be honest with you, um, as they did. Um, but is this Ottawa showing a side of them that says that besides the talent on the team that they've got a little bit of moxie or, you know, strut? I don't know. Yeah, you know, look, Kipper, maybe, but you're sitting in 28th place, right? So the the amount of swagger has to be somewhat measured. But this is a team, it's a franchise that has really struggled to find their identity. Like if you ask Ottawa fans, what's this team's identity? You'd have a hard time. Like back at, you know, 10, 12 years ago, they were the pesky Sens, right? Because they would always kind of punch above their weight and they hung around in games. Like they had an identity. And even under Guy Boucher, they had an identity, kind of lock it down, play tight defensive hockey and, and win. They haven't had an identity in a long time. And I, I think it's premature to say that what Ridley did on Saturday is like this definitive start of the swagger era of the Ottawa Senators. Yeah, I mean, it, I, yeah, you're right. It's too strong for me to say. But at the same time, if, if Ridley Gregg's going to be this guy that every once in a while does call out a team or doesn't worry about repercussions, like, hey, don't disappear, Ridley, the next 25 games. Like, you know, bring it. And, and and this is the thing, like, there's no more Toronto-Ottawa meetings this season, right? And that, I think, would have been a really interesting uh, story to follow if these two teams met again. Look, he's had a few things this year. Early in the year, he hammered Alex Dabrinkit in a, in, with a clean hit that, well, at least a lot of people thought it was a clean hit. It got penalized. Like, like Ridley's going to be a guy, if you go through and look at his career in the Western Hockey League, guys, he was suspended on multiple occasions. Uh, there's not very many players like that anymore, right? That The guys that play on the edge, the almost the Matt Cook type of guys, and I, I don't want to put him, like, Cook was in his own uh, stratosphere there, but guys that play on the edge, there's not many of them left in the game. He's a throwback. And I do think that he's the type of guy, and, and Marchand at times in his career has done that, although he's, Brad is just an elite player now, right? But, but, Ridley Gregg is going to be one of those guys that if Ottawa ever gets into the playoffs, and that's a big if, he's going to be one of those thorn in the side, I don't want to see this guy, and kind of a Claude Lemieux, Brad Marchand, that type of player. So how do you feel about a guy like, you know, everyone was asked about this, so, you know, Ryan Reeves is asked too, and he had his say and basically said, you know, back when I came in the league in 2010, you know, the guy probably would still be on the ice. He basically saying it used to be a more violent game you know, Reeves is maybe not as relevant as he once was. Where do you think guys like that have a role in incidents like this and solving these sort of, I guess, problems between teams? Yeah, it's interesting. And, and Reeves went on the ice, did he not, right, for the last he five did, seconds? Yeah, yeah. He, he was hot there. So, uh, you know, he he's there, and that's the reason why Toronto signed him was to, you know, theoretically address these types of things. Again, I don't know, like... Look, look, this is more for the Toronto market. Like, if, if if Riley doesn't do what he does, you guys are spending the day on, on 590 and on Sportsnet. All you're doing is talking about there was no response from Toronto. This team is spineless, right? Like, that's probably what the discourse is going to be in Toronto. So Riley does it, and now people are saying, maybe it should have been Ryan Reeves. Maybe it should have been somebody else. So I, I think that that type of... That type of message sending seems a little bit outdated. Like, it, like I, I don't know. Like, I guess, I guess you could have sent Ryan Reeves out in the last five seconds. 
to go after Ridley Gregg. Maybe. I guess you could have done something like that. But I, look, I think this stuff is, quite frankly, sometimes, as long as it's nobody's getting seriously hurt and there's not a ton of danger involved, sometimes this stuff is, this type of hatred's good in the Battle of Ontario. Like, guys, this has been a dormant rivalry for the better part of the decade. I was thinking about this the other day when this all happened. I think in the cap era, it almost feels, I mean, Matthews had his four-goal game. When's the last time there was any spice between Ottawa and Toronto, like mm. the time that Austin Matthews checked to see Scott Sabrin's nameplate, was that the the most spicy thing that's happened in the cap era? So sometimes it's okay to have Ryan Reeves say what he says, and and for Ridley Gregg to do what he did, and for all these things to happen. Because sometimes, as long as it doesn't cross the line into this is reckless, dangerous behavior. This type of hate and this type of rivalry sometimes I think is good for the sport. I agree. And all it took was to bring that goon coach back, Jacques Martin. Yes. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so noted goon. So what's uh what's left for the Ottawa Senators in, in the last 30 here? Because there was some talk that they might be interested in Chris Tanov. I'm like, yeah, but is Chris Tanov interested in the Ottawa Senators? Yeah, like I mean I look at Tanev's situation. I think if I'm Chris Tanev, I'd want to go and have a playoff run with a Toronto, with, you know, call, whoever needs a, a, a defenseman to to boost up my value for the offseason. Then when Ottawa or a team like that wants to sign me, my value is a little bit more increased. So that that's me if I'm Tanev. I want to go play some meaningful games. The interesting thing on Ottawa, guys, it's Tarasenko. That's the name to watch. That's the player to be paying attention to. We chatted with Vlad Tarasenko today. You know, he confirmed he switched agents. He said it was a family decision. Uh, hasn't had any meaningful talks with Ottawa about what's going to happen. But I think we can read between the lines here. He's going to likely get shipped off at some point between now and that March 8th trade deadline. And what can Ottawa get for him? Like, as I'm looking at biggest Ottawa stories the next three weeks, four weeks, it's Tarasenko. Uh, Montreal got a first-round pick for Sean Monaghan. I don't think Ottawa is getting a first for Tarasenko, but I don't think it's out of the realm that they could maybe get a second-round pick, maybe a prospect, something of that nature. But that, to me, of all the storyline, and this is Steve Steos' first deadline as a general manager, he's fully in control of the car, two hands on the steering wheel. I'm really interested to see how he and Dave Poole and uh, handle the next few weeks. Ian, great stuff, man. Really appreciate you making time for us. The Battle of Anytime. Ontario, it's back, baby. Yeah. It's back. <laughs> yeah, ne tune in next October. It's back. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Ian. Yeah, Ian thanks Mendes, me, senior writer with The Athletic. Uh, yeah, I liked his answer a lot on... Just the players sick and tired of watching a building being dominated by 70% of the opposition fan base. Yeah. Well, every I don't team think anyone's cares most here. about the least matchup. Well, I don't Cadre think it. I don't think anyone is sitting here going, I don't know why Greg did it. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like it's the Leafs. It was a close game. Bell, Ontario. Yeah. Take this. Eat it. And then the Leafs said, oh, don't say that to us in front of our friends and family. So, so since we're doing so much Leafs in Ottawa or whatever. Do we want to listen to the Reeves clips from today? I think probably. Because uh, all three, is it, all three, well, is it know, any yeah. good? All three of them are pretty good. Okay, let's just play one and we'll... Uh, <laughs> you make let's, the call. Listen, let's listen to Reeves clip one and then we'll go from there, okay? Okay. I mean, the guy takes a clap and you're going to go play patty cake with him? Like, no, well, there's, there's got to be a message sent and uh, I, I don't think a, a push is a message, to be honest with you. So um, I thought... I thought it was appropriate. I will say the one thing that I'm hearing from a lot of people is you want to go up there and fight them or whatever. That's like the appropriate response. But you know how that goes. The guy doesn't want to fight you. So you go over there and drop your gloves. He doesn't want to fight. So you kind of yeah. grab him and you go. To... Oh, you can still fight him. You just fight his. Just punch him. So yeah. is it better if you're just suckering a guy yeah. who's not yeah. fighting well, you? One or two. Is that better than a stick? Yes. Yeah. It is better. Suckering a guy in the jaw is better than a lacrosse champ. It's not a little cross it's, it's, I ain't You don't have to bit. suck him. <laughs> <around, laughs> right? It's just a little baby crap. Like, you know, again, yeah. if if Ridley doesn't know something's coming when he just showed Ridley up Ridley should team, know everything's coming. Okay? Yeah. Then I get one, one lick in for sure. One lick if would get should, him... But if he drops him with 5, a clean 000. right in that situation... Well, then you're an idiot, Ridley, for not paying attention. 
And I'd rather take my chance on that than yeah. a cross check to the head. I think what happens, though, in all honesty, Kip, is he goes over, he drops his gloves, Greg doesn't, he wrestles them down, yeah. and nothing's accomplished. To me, it's he wanted to get his pound of flesh. And anyway, this is, this he isn't, didn't play Patty This King. isn't Morgan Riley. This isn't the incident. I'm just throwing out a general comment. Sure. I'm not sure the players today know how to start a fight in the National Hockey League. <laughs> Explain. Hey, you want to go? Yeah. You want to go? I, I just, I, I think there's ways that you can confront, yeah. you could uh, goad sometimes yeah. a guy into a fight. Or at like least you can, a few of these you so you know it's coming before guy, my gloves come you off. You can embarrass a guy. Mm -hmm. There's just, there's an art to it. Yeah. And I don't think the guys think enough about it. So sometimes right. they have these, these raw emotional bursts. Yeah. And I think that's fair. And, and it a can good point, get them actually. in trouble. Like it's, yeah, there, there's an art to it, well, guys. Yeah. So that's the best I can explain it to you. No, no, I, that's great. Uh, in Reeves clip three, he All talks right. about that very thing. If we could listen to it, Kipper, I know you love these. Yeah, no, let's, let's go clip it. three. You would hope. You would hope. But, um, you know, these young kids these days are, uh, they're playing a different brand of hockey than I'm used to. Uh, the codes changed a little bit. The games changed a lot, and uh, it's unfortunate that you know a young kid like that can get away with something like that, and then you know, one of our best players is going to get suspended for it. So, um, yeah, I'd make hockey violent again, and get that tattooed on me. The worst part about it is like that's George Peros's company. Yeah, Violent Gentleman. Violent Gentleman is the name of Peros's company. It's like, ugh. <laughs> you can't have guys saying the thing. This is, Ryan and I are, are kind of aligned on it's, yeah, it's just, it's a different, it's a different world right now for these kids on, on, like some of them, like, and, and I'll use the Leafs as an example. Like their, their top stars are not confrontational people. No. They go out of their way right. to watch Austin Matthews again, go into that scrum at the end of the game, Saturday night and play traffic cop and have like his pulse didn't change one iota i know like kills me it does i hate to admit how much it kills me but it kills me like there's a lot of good players like mm. i think sid would have reacted differently uh connor i think connor would have reacted differently it's just not in his nature so once he gets in a position of being uncomfortable, who knows what he's capable or not capable of doing, but he chooses to stay comfortable in any situation outside yeah. of you know, and, and I think his that, job. That, you know, to the point of the game changing, you know, you go through the list of top scorers, whether it's Patterson or Panarin or Ranton and Nylander, Reinhardt, you know, Matthews being in there, McCarr, like Aho, Robert Thomas, like Jesper Bratt, the top guys. Not a lot of these guys are gifted in the way or aggressive in the way that you would want them to be in those yeah. moments. Certainly there are the guys, and I agree with you, a guy like Nathan McKinnon threw a helmet at a guy's head, I think. Yeah. You know, like that's there's one, guys That's one of the funniest who, hockey clips uh, ever. Nate's like... Yeah. If you, he would have out there, he would have Short views. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't win a Stanley Cup by accident. Wires cross guy. He's yeah. on the first team wire cross. Like, he he's is. a freak. But I, I know we're talking a lot of Leafs here, but I have to say, Ryan Reed's getting killed. He obviously doesn't play a ton. He, like, you know, he's he is what he is at this point of his career. But I will say, it's really refreshing to hear clips from a guy coming out and not just saying the same old crap that we've heard, the cliches and just like, oh, we're fine. Like, to have a guy that's coming out and saying that stuff to me, mm -hmm. it's nice to hear. And, like, he's defending his teammate. He's saying he shouldn't be suspended. Like, that guy, you know, it's just... Yeah, we played I, a lot of the Sen stuff where his teammates were less inclined yes, to be like... I, yeah. I just love what I'm hearing from Reeves, and I know people probably hate it because he doesn't play a lot, but, like, it's nice to hear. I will admit. So, anyways, yes. you want to do some game time here, boys? Yeah, let's go to game time, and then we'll take a quick break, and we'll get into the Calgary Flames and Uyghurs' first career hat yeah, trick. I think he's the most goals going back a year now for among D. Uh, it's game time, presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary. Bet365 must be 19 plus, Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Now, you mentioned Mackenzie Weger there. Um, Hold on, sorry to interrupt you. How yeah. did your Super Bowl bets go? I lost everything. Yeah? Lost it all. Guys, I, I told you in the group chat I, that I made three bucks. I need to walk it back and be honest. I won a buck uh, 40. Wow. Yeah. I, I will say I made an offline bet. 
little money line bet with uh, old Ron on the couch. Yeah. Made 30 on that one. Okay. So not bad, okay. not bad. All right, but all right. My online bets didn't go so hot. I, I will say I was an Isaiah Pacheco touchdown away from a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> and when they got it down, because they got it down to the yeah, five-yard line. carried it a couple times and down there. Hey. There was a couple guys in the room that had the same action, and it would have been a lot happier drive home. Let's just say that. Let me tell you something. If Blackjack yeah, here became we go. Yeah, 22, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I would have made a lot of money. That's anyways, yeah. it was it would have set up for an electric moment for him to walk it off and win it for the Chiefs. But anyways, that's fine. But why I mentioned Uyghur, the Calgary Flames play in New York tonight. And if you'll remember last year, this fixture, this game, was one of the more explosive games of the year where Truba smoked Kadri. Remember, that was a massive yes. hit, and there's a bunch of scraps, and it was one of the best games of the year. Not saying that's going to happen again, but it's a, always a, it's a great jersey matchup. Those Flames whites versus the blue of the Rangers, love that. Good aesthetic matchup. Uh, the Flames are plus 135. They've been hot, actually. So if you want a little bit of a, a value on the, Ranger, uh, on the Flames going into New York, you can have okay. a look at that one. And uh, the New Jersey Devils are kind of... Looking at me at a minus 150. They've been playing better recently. They've been getting a little bit better goaltending. They're on the outside looking in. They really need these kind of points against teams like the Kraken. So give me the New Jersey Devils minus 150 tonight on the that, money man. line as well. So yeah. those are my two looks for tonight. Uh, and that was game time. Visit Bet 365. Visit the app for the latest odds and find out why it's ever ordinary at Bet 365. Must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Okay, let's take a quick break here, and we'll come back, and we'll talk uh, in deeper, uh, deeper detail about the Calgary Flames and where do they go because they, they, they just win. And uh, I, I don't know. The more they trade players, the more they win. They should just trade everyone. You they mentioned can't have to the Leafs. You mentioned the uh, New Jersey Devils. Mm -hmm. They need a goalie bad. Elliot Friedman reporting that there oh, were some Mark. talks about Markstrom. We'll get into that and more when we return to Real Kipper and Bourne. Four games on top in the National Hockey League, including Calgary at New York. We're discussing the Calgary Flames off a big win. Kenzie Weger has been like a really good pickup. And I don't know, was he a bit of an afterthought on, on, the, on the trade with Florida? Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't, I mean, he's definitely the smaller piece, right? But compared to Huberto, but they gave him a huge contract. Yeah, they did. Immediately. Well, he, yeah, he, he's a minute muncher too. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where they would be without him. So he is first or tied for first in the NHL in goals by D, which is uh, no small feat, especially covering the Toronto Maple Leafs where no D ever score. Yeah, no, he is leading the league at 15 yeah. goals, uh, one, two ahead of Thomas Harley. Oh, wow. So, yeah, he's been great. He was a guy that the Leafs kicked tires on at one point, I remember, a week or, but no, he, uh, he's got an edge too. Like, I, I really like that guy. Mm -hmm. As we spoke of earlier on this show, uh, Noah Hannafin doesn't seem in a hurry to sign $60 million with the Calgary Flames. Is that what you think? There's that much out there for yeah. him? And he hasn't signed that? Nope. Which means, okay. Yeah. Got to move him. Good rule of thumb. If you offer anyone $60 million to do something, they don't immediately say yes. They're probably just time to let him go. Pack those bags, bud. Yeah. He can't get the extra year on a deal so the assumption is that he'd be fine at 50 playing somewhere else and signing a seven-year deal right seven yeah. or 55 million if he matches or close to 55 million if he matches the ballpark of 7.5 on an aav yeah. I gotta tell you, I would leap to sign him to that contract. Yeah. You know, given his age and his ability, skill set, where he is in his career, where the cap is going. I mean, somewhere around the Morgan Riley number, or even a little bit more, would not bother me one bit. There's also a sense out there that Chris Tanev could be traded within a week to 10 days. Yeah. We're getting mm -hmm. to that time of year. Don't yeah. tell the trade deadline producers that. <laughs> He's kind of getting antsy, I think. He's got a young family. He wants to get this. Yeah, if I'm going to go somewhere, let's go get set off and do it now. Yeah. Not not interested March 8th. Of course, he can't control this, but I think out of respect for him, yeah. Calgary's going to try to get a deal done sooner than later. Well, and there's just so many reasons why they should. Um, obviously, there are eager parties. Tampa Bay, we mentioned, though, Sergachev probably heavily interested. Um, also, 
you know, the value you get from adding a Tanev, you get more value now than you will later on. And yeah, it makes sense. So I can see that happening. I'm not on the pulse of uh, Flames Nation. I know that may surprise you here. But I, I just, I guess they're pretty far out of a wild. They're not that far. I guess they're kind of like, are you sure you want to trade off everybody? Like, you don't want, you just, I guess you're not going anywhere, but this team has shown that they're not the worst team. Like, how far back of a playoff spot are they? I yeah, think they're three you know, points a, back. A Flames team could look at, you know, trying to be Vancouver, just like so many teams will, but where even this year, if you had to add someone who you had some term, you know, start trying to get better here, thinking of next year. Uh, the asset collection off of tan of yeah. and hannafin could be and maybe huge. markstrom mm-hmm. maybe markstrom and, and maybe markstrom yeah that is it. and the, the beauty they should do that by the, the way the beauty of that is that you you take those assets back at the the draft in the summer turn them into players and turn them into media players not 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 potential like right. you can flip them for for 24 25 26 year olds i'm with you and i love that to, to me that's not done enough by teams where you say, hey, you know, we're teams are either tanking or they're going the other way. To me, a team like the Flames can add all these assets and, and immediately trade them. Their next year, guys, their 2024 draft, mm. two first rounders, a second, a third, two fourth rounders, a fifth, a sixth. Like they have really? real assets. Who's the first rounder from? Uh, Vancouver. Hmm. Well, that one was that the Koozie? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, because yeah, the one that just happened. Yeah. yeah. And at Markstrom's age, it just makes no sense to hold them. Does not make any sense. What do you? You don't think you're going to win a cup in the next couple of years? Then get him while while he's still hot. Yeah, and while you can get assets. I, you know, I, I sent you guys a message the other day about Josh Anderson. Like that was a guy who had real ass, you know, real value to Montreal. Like, what would he he have been worth last year at the deadline or first? Yeah, you know, and now I'll oh, keep uh, going. Yeah, yeah, keep going. And now what 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 you, you uh, get for Josh Anderson in his contract well, first? No. Oh, I'm telling you. You're out of what? Your You're out of your mind. How is he using mm-hmm. one goal, two goals? I don't care. Mm. That guy is what six three he's and, big and he skates, skates like nowhere. The wind. Apparently, yeah, he flies. He, what do you think you're get, What do you think you're getting? A fourth round pick? He makes for, a he makes a hundred million dollars and he doesn't score goals. He's five point five million this and three more seasons. Oh my no, god, three yeah. more. Yeah. Listen, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know <laughs> if uh, you need Montreal to eat some of that. Yes. I would think that you do. See, now we're talking. Okay. Give me Josh Anderson a 3 5. No. Uh, I think you'd be really lucky to get him at four. Yeah. Okay. And you'll get your first. Yeah. Josh Anderson. Uh, okay. Yeah. Listen, I'm watching the Toronto Maple Leafs every day. Uh, he's immediately playing 15 minutes, and I know that's not a great sign on the team. 15 minutes on a third line with, you know, yeah, Domi I, and Yarn. He, he, he's, <laughs> Domi, he's, he's a little, little just pass it to him, and it would bounce off the skates off the end. Josh Anderson's a little reluctant to bring it as much as a Tom Wilson, but that is the physical presence, guys. For sure. Of Josh Anderson. So well, if if Montreal could do that, the the only thing is he has a uh, modified no trade. I don't know what that would look like, but so I undersold him. He's got seven goals this year. Sorry, I said two. So that was a little, that was a little rude by me. Seven goals. Yes, yeah. very rude. Minus nineteen. Um, I watched uh, the Habs game because I was at the cottage with a couple of guys who are Habs fans. Watched the Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon game against St. Louis. St. Louis. Boy, Habs are heading south. South, south, south in the standings. I know they're trading off. They're yeah. trying to rebuild. I understand it. But for one of the classic franchises in the NHL, they are a tough watch, boys. Slavkovsky is looking Coming around. like a decent player now. Yeah. But <laughs> what about a... He just won't be a, no. First a of franchise player, yeah. type of player. Yeah. What about a Mike Matheson at yeah. the deadline? Well, not, I mean, not like, but you're talking about like their, their best defenseman. Yeah, he's really good. But yeah. they, but if you're them, well, you know what good's he doing? He? You? He's not young. Thirty. No, sorry. So he turns thirty at the end of the month. Yeah. Uh, and what's he got left on his deal? So this, and then two more years at four point eight. Well, oh, you get him. You get a haul haul for him. Yes. He probably plays twenty five minutes a night. Yes. Yeah, he's a really good player, and he's a beautiful skater up he and is. down the ice. Like yeah. he has got to be in the conversation one of the best skaters in the league. Yeah. David Savard could get you a first. First. 
Well, I mean, you see the names that get thrown out there. Everybody's just like, yeah, they're, they have skates on yeah. and they can skate a little bit and yeah. they're getting a first. Like I saw. It's so funny watching the NBA when they're like, yeah, well, four firsts or whatever. They just. What did, what did, uh, what did Tampa Bay give Columbus for David Savard and turned him into a, like two a seconds. fifth de defenseman? Yeah. I think it was two seconds. Two seconds yeah. or first. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Or one first. Oh, he's a shutdown guy. He's big. He's strong. He gets in people's way. So like, yeah, Montreal. This is, is this is the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, they they really gotta they gotta nail this one. Yeah, because yeah. they I think they have a couple more that they could trade. Yeah. Oilers would be interested in Savard, Tan of. That's what they need. Yeah, they'll get someone. I would presume. You know, I don't think the Canucks are done in terms of adding D. I know Winnipeg wants to, like, Canada is just starving for D. If you have them, like Montreal does, there's a... I told you, that all, all, all Canadian teams in the playoffs right now, very aggressive. So, oh, go ahead. I was, I was just going to ask what's the door off. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say, similar to Vancouver, did you, there is a, on my Canucks Twitter feed that I have lots of people involved in that, there is a... Very hot debate about the gritty the guy did. Uh, oh, what's his yeah. name? Oh, yeah, Jake Wallman. Yeah, did the celebration, like the the gritty, the Mitch Marner move where he, you know, I don't know. Have you ever seen the gritty? Yes, I know the gritty. Okay, can you do the gritty? Um, the On question skates? is, why would I want to? <laughs> yeah. But it's a hot debate because they play again soon. I think they play again this week. They're asking for retribution. They're <laughs> mad. They are. They're mad. It's a, it's a hot button debate in okay. Vancouver right now. So yeah. we're on in Vancouver. What'd you think? So I think it's like, it just sucks is all. Like, it's like it was culturally relevant 18 months ago oh, or something like that. It but was a rather clean, gritty, as the kids would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. But uh, it does It's gritty here at, it's during an All-Star Week. Yeah. Yeah. It's a celebration. You're winning. You've won the game, like a walk-off, bat flip sort of thing. I got no problem with a big celebration for... A surprise moment where a good thing but happens. What's more offensive? A slap shot into an empty net or a grin? The game's over. The, yeah. the, the Sens have won the game. Yes. This is not a, oh, my God, we did it, yeah. like, jubilation moment to me. Uh, I'm not that bothered by the Gritty. Did, did Gritty not You're jump? You're did, did he not jump the shark, like, on Fallon? and Who, like, Gritty? Yeah. Oh, we're talking about two different things here. But. No, I'm just saying, his popularity, is it still... <laughs> that is he, Gritty, the Philly Gritty? Is he... I will say, because we were down at the fan fair, yeah. uh, whatever, Friday, a couple Fridays ago. And they brought out all the mascots at one point. And I, I'm not, I was legitimately excited to see Gritty. Gritty's the guy. He's, he's a superstar. Okay. He, he yeah, that's what I'm telling you. He's still one. there, though. It's he's still there. Oh, yeah. He's the Connor McDavid of, of uh, mascots. He is, the, he is yeah. the cream of the crop. I will say, I just want to separate the difference between the Ridley Gregg thing and the Wallman thing. Is One is like joy and jubilation, uh -huh. and one is a clean F you. Yes. One is involving your team in celebrating. One is aimed at the other team. Those are the, that's the separation for me. I will say, though, if I was a Meathead Canucks fan, like I am a Meathead Leafs fan, I would probably would like someone to speak to him if in the next Greg game. If Greg had done the gritty, you probably oh would be like, God. kill him. God. So, yeah. Oh, if Greg did the gritty, I wouldn't have made, I would have passed away. I wouldn't have made it here. <laughs> I would not be around. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Oilers, losers of two of three. That's oh, this news sucks. Big news. <laughs> okay, what were the odds, though, Saturday it night is, that they is. would get shut out by L.A.? I don't think that they had been shut out since the Woodcroft days, but, of course, they've only won since then, so been a while. But, yeah, pretty unlikely. Um, what do you think? Just maybe a little bit of a letdown after the streak ends and you just... It's just hard to keep that foot on the pedal yeah. for that long. Oh. And L.A. has a new coach. Yeah, and they're yeah, all on their best behavior. The LA is going through what Edmonton went through, right? We're getting that new coach. Here we go now. Yeah. So they are in the first wild card spot, and they are three points behind the Oilers. And oh, we got the standings up here again. And so then it's Vegas next with sixty-eight points. How are the Oilers? And I know how. Yeah. I don't need help. They on won this. a lot in a row. They, but it's just like, how are they not farther ahead, but they're four games, fewer games played, I mean, and the start of the I, season happened. We, we are barreling towards Oilers Golden Knights in the first round here. Wow. Yeah, it's really looking like that's, it's a possible, like, you know, you talk about how great, how, how, you talk about how great the, the Canadian teams, the years they're having, and it's like, Jets get Avalanche first round, Oilers Golden Knights. We could be out two Canadian teams <laughs> in a week. <laughs> it's scary. The Golden yeah. Knights, healthy. Yeah. will be scary. Oh, yeah, man. That that blue line 
mm-hmm. is just big. We also just watched Kansas City do that thing where teams who have won are comfortable in yes. those sort of tight Correct. moments and, you know, coming off a cup win, you, you got to beat the best. And they know they can beat them in a series. They had it last year. Right. They got that little bit of, they just ended their streak. They don't like each other. Yeah. They got, I just. That's must watch TV. Oh my God. That's I mean, incredible I hope for series. Oilers sake, it doesn't happen. I actually think the Oilers have a chance to get above them by the end of the year, but we don't really know get them. anything about uh, Eichel. Do we? Jack, in terms of how how hurt is he, or yeah, that when he's coming back. I remember it being a, six that's weeks. That's a big deal. I remember it being six weeks the injury when it when it first happened, but I haven't heard much on that. So, article January eighteenth says we'll miss at least four weeks. So mm-hmm. that should take us to roughly now. Yeah. So I'm not sure what his status is, but um, I expect to see him back this month. Yeah. Yeah, Eichel back. Shea Theodore, they've been playing without. Like they are. Yeah, I, I, if I'm an Oilers fan, that's my that's my Panthers. If I'm an Oilers fan, that's hey, not the team I want to see. In terms of guys who could be added for a playoff run, what do you guys think of Phil Kessel sitting at home right now? Hasn't <sighs> played all year. Wants to play. Rick Tockett recently made comments that he still thinks Phil has something left in the tank. Which Vancouver? Listen, no one knows him better than than Talk. Yeah. I mean, he he had. Yeah, him but in, don't you think you fall in, in love with the guys that you have won with before and? Should have won How the Conn Smythe one year. How old is he now? Well, like, I don't know. He isn't. What's he been doing all this time? Ah, that's a Train great question. <laughs> VO2 max every day. Boys, I don't want to stereotype here, but I'm like, <laughs> 36. We, we want to make sure Phil's been on the ice a lot. Phil's saying he's ready. He's ready to go. I think. I believe him. I think it would be an awesome story if the Canucks or another Canadian team or like a contender signed Phil Castle. Like, I don't think he's going to give you a lot but it's just good to have him in the league. If he's sitting in your press box and he's got to come out as your 13th forward and put him in one day, yeah. there's a good chance he shoots one in the net. Yeah, he could come flying down off the left wing and rip it Ping. under the under the bar, shoot a low blocker for sure. But yeah. I, do you think it could happen, Kipper, that he'd go somewhere? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, no I'd one, have to hear No one can mo- make moves right now, Kip. I bet you someone picks him up. I'd have to hear more about, like... What is up to? Yes. <laughs> is he coming in... Hot. Like looking like an NHL we don't player want <laughs> or a bowling ball, right? Is he in shape is the first question. I bet he is. I bet he is. Yeah, I mean. I'm a Kessel believer. Uh, where are you guys on Ovi being back? Five goals yeah. in the last five games. This is the show is such an Ovi hater show. It's, I Everyone that goes in, I cringe. Well, the one, yeah, he shot it through the, the Panthers goalie the other yeah. day. I was like, ah, oh, you got to have to. Yeah, everyone that goes in, I'm like, oh, God. I don't know how... The Washington Capitals, they have to be the slowest team oh, in the league. They stink. You know, I forget who I was tweeting about this with the other day, but, like, they have names, but names that are expired. Not, like... No, they have no names. No, but, like... Yeah, okay, Ovi and... Ovi's a name. Oshie. Oshie's a name. Oshie. Pacioretty's a John name. John Carlson. But, yeah, but it's... But those are not effective players anymore. Not anymore. And the rest of the group is just... I, the, there, the fact there's some that young kids there. Above 500 is baffling. Yeah, maybe like Tom. I Wilson, think I, I in all honesty, though, like, well, what it is, they, they've, they've been actually pretty good defensively, have they not? Well, Lindgren's been very good in net, mm. so he keeps them in games. Yeah, and the one thing that's killing Ovi is they've yeah. got one of the worst power plays in the league. Well, that's because they pass it to the guy who yeah. hammers it into <laughs> the wall. Yeah, they wow. stand. He stands in one spot for two full minutes and goes off the ice. And everybody's Lindgren's a nine fifteen in twenty three games for them. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Number. And everybody's playing the diamond, right? So Ovi is not getting his one timer anymore. He's just waiting, just waiting with his stick scraping and the I don't, ceiling. I, I, I don't know where he is on on shots, but it was an automatic throughout his career that he just took the most shots. Yes, right. And he's got a. I, I don't think he's close this year. Oh. That, that's the, been the biggest drop off, I think, for him is that he just doesn't shoot the puck he to the has, net anymore. No, he has been like the league leader by miles in his prime, and yeah. then even not in his prime, um, looking quickly, he is not in the top 10. Not in he's the top not, 10. He's nowhere to be And seen. where is the top 10? Would I, uh, So Ovechkin is 26th in the league. In shots on goal. Yeah, top guy is 260. He's got 160. Who's mm-hmm. top guy? Top guy is? Uh, can let me guess. Pasternak. Pasternak. Give me Matthews. second, though. I'll Matthews give you uh, McKinnon. McKinnon second. Yeah. Ooh. Matthews fourth. Yeah. There's a guy between them there. Where's he play? Tampa. Oh. <laughs> uh, Stamkos. No. 
Stamkos? No. no. Oh, I don't know. It's Cooch. Oh, yeah, duh. Uh, Connor McDavid? Where's McDavid? He's not that high up there. Oh, Willie Nylander is sixth. Tavares is 12th. Wow. Uh, McDavid, is he in the league? That's yes, a he's 30th, 157. Yeah. That's really shocking, too. I'm going to go back to the last year. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is always bad radio. But no, Everyone sit with me while I... I can just, fa- I can just hear, hear the wheels turning in Kipper's head right now about how little McDavid shoots. <laughs> <laughs> Obi was 12th last year in shots. Last year, uh, uh, last year, McDavid was third. He's 30th this year. Okay, so like, if my math is correct, That's 27. OV oh. needs how many goals to pass or tie Gretzky? 60? I don't know. I think it's less 60. than that. He's eight, it? it's eight, he's got 835. What's 892 the record or something? 892? Like that? Yeah. Mm. He's going to get there, guys. He's great. Okay. He's going to get there. But when? Like, <laughs> no, not when, but how, what does it look like? For the Washington Capitals, right. is, he... is this just now? Is this team gonna suck? Yes. And this is just about Ovi getting the record. Yeah, yes. their power plays at fourteen percent, but they leave him out there for two full yeah. minutes, just like get okay. there already. Is, is, is that is that gonna be a fun record to follow? I'm not having fun. No, I hate every minute of it. I just don't I, want I to say have if we should establish as a Canadian still... show, we're kind of rooting for Gretz to hold yes. on to it a little if bit. He's... Of course, if he's still. A fairly dominant guy putting the puck in the net, then right. you can sell it. But if he's getting 18 but a if, year. Is, is the league and sponsors going to ride this thing and we're watching a guy well past his date? Yes. Yeah, the, the guy with Putin in his Instagram picture scoring 18 goals a year, they're going to have confetti falling from the ceiling when he gets there. It's going to be an awkward celebration. It's going to be awkward. 20 games, they're 20 right? points out of the playoffs and it's, by then. It's, it's going to be awkward yeah. for uh, teammates and a coaching staff. Well, no, it isn't. They'll just give him his way to goes. And... No, but... Way to go. No, 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 <laughs> way no, to go. no, no. Listen, guys want to win. Guys want to... Frustrated uh, watching this? Well... Yes. You know what? I guarantee, I you know, just thinking about this, I guarantee this guy's in team going like, hey, we got to do something else in the power play. It does not work just yes. trying to tee up that and that's, automatic that's, shooting machine. That's going to be the challenge it's here. It's a potato gun from the top of the circle. Next. It's going to be a challenge for the Washington Capitals on how they handle this and how much is too much time and when do we give someone else a chance and... What if they took him off the power play? Oh, my God. They're I, like, it's not working. I just wish Gratz would come out and be like, I don't want him to get it. But he's just oh, yeah. too classy. Yeah. He's just too classy. That's not happening. I know. Well, I just you know want the, it back. All the old guys did it about the Oilers record. I just let Gretz come out and be like, no. He gets like 890 and he's like, I'm going to say it. I've I, seen enough. Yeah. Get him, boys. Kick him off the tour. He <laughs> 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 decides they've seen enough. Yeah. Uh, we're not happy. But in the meantime, they're in the hunt for a playoff spot. They're in the, the hunt minus for nothing. Gold effort. They're in the hunt for nothing. Well, <sighs> Hopefully the Flames and Rangers is ex- as explosive tonight as it was last year. With the Truba. Big, Truba Roger. hit. What's, uh, what's Calgary in for with the New York Rangers here? Because the Rangers were off to a, a, one of those starts where they made everybody believers, and now it's like, uh, not sure they're ready for prime time yet. They're in a decent run now. I, I think it's a pretty good-looking Ranger team. I don't think they're... It's tough looking at teams this year. I don't think anyone is that great, and the Rangers are a flawed team, but... They've won four in a row, starting to win again, trying to fend off the surging Carolina Hurricanes. Two hot teams right now, the Rangers and Flames. Like uh, any team now in the National Hockey League, Shesterkin goes on a run. He's going run. And they're good again. Simple sport. Calgary and the Rangers tonight, one of four games. No hard empty netters, you guys. We'll be watching. Yeah, that's right. Don't do Respect. It. Lots of respect. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Our thanks to Ian Mendez. We are back again tomorrow on The Real Kipper and Bourne Show.